Hey. Hi. So please introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Sue Ryan. I'm VP of Marketing for a company called Fraud Systems, and we make the Airjet. And is that what you're holding there? So this is an Airjet, and it's a solid state active cooling chip. All right, so let's enter your your Computex 2023 presentation. And as soon as I get into the room, I feel it's cooler in here. <laughs> is, it, uh, is it already running the AC? Yes, no, I wish. Unfortunately, okay. it is not, but it is very cool in here. So what, what am I seeing here? So here you are seeing, these are Ed Edget Minis. This is our smaller product. These are Edget Pros, and this is the larger one. This is going to go into mass pr production later in the year. The Airjet Mini is actually in mass pr production right now. And so this is a de demonstration and it shows how the air is being blown out of the Airjet Mini chip. All right. And you call it the chip. Yes. But it's a cooler. It is. So the reason we call it a chip is it uses a lot of the chip manufacturing capabilities. And it's also a self, um, it's, a, it's a device in unto itself. So this is actually inserted as it stands as a product into, a, into the host pro product to remove heat to either double the performance um, or make it smaller. There's a whole lot of um, benefits to using it. Yeah. And those basically it can make, it can double performance, it can make it lighter, faster, thinner, um, dust free. It makes it dust proof because you can put a dust filter on the actual device as well. So you can have a computer now which has active cooling and no dust. So basically it's kind of like you for can forget the fans. This is actually a much more efficient, quieter way of doing. It sounds removal. like one of these um, inventions when people talk about the forever energy machine or something like that and it's hard to believe. But this is, people are coming here to Computex 2023 Abs absolutely. And you're actually showing it and there's no magic, there's no it's, tricks. It's actually working. One could argue it's almost, it looks like ma ma magic, but when, when it comes to does it actually work, this is actually the Gold Best Choice Award from Computex. So we submitted for that, we've won a number of awards. Um, so that's kind of validates the fact that it is actually real and works. And there is a, a famous YouTuber Yes. who comes by your booth and does video so and that, is impressed. So that is Linus from Linus Tech, Tech Tips. So his video is already, I think, approaching 2 million views. Um, PC World Magazine has also done a number of stor st stories on us. So we've really had that kind of close look from the me media and from cu customers. And of course, at Computex, we had a, the first mini PC in the world was announced that's going to actually have these chips in it. And Here's some illustration of all the applications. So you could be cooling SSDs. Yes. So now suddenly, potentially you can have faster, bigger storage and it's okay. Yes, so now, so, so especially as the interfaces move from the Thunderbolt 3 to the Thunderbolt 4, and there is the capability to, to do things faster. At the moment, that's really hard to do because of the thermal envelope. And if you see the new ones coming out, they've got these massive, great heat sinks on them. Those heat sinks can now go away and you can replace them with an Airjet Mini. Because my SSD gets really, really hot and I use it to cook uh, breakfast ah. and stuff. <laughs> it's get really hot. And how about, uh, Smartphones. Yes. So you, you can even target this. Yes. You can have the most powerful smartphones in the world. Yep. And when you look at smartphones, if you actually look into the 5G networks, the 5G networks actually don't work very well because the heat generated by the modem shuts them down and they revert back to 4G. So you really need to look at that when you're really what, what constrains the performance of these d devices now is not the capability of the, of the chips inside them, it's the heat. Heat really limits the performance of them. Nice. And uh, here I see notebook. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of like the big talk of the show, no? You're like, you will help those laptops just run Ab absolutely. at max. We can, over overclocked. Yes, we constantly. Can, we can double the performance in the same super slim d d design. And we actually have a sample in, in in, inside, so I can show you that. So, but the same with stick PCs, gaming smartphones, even LED lights. Like all of these, um, all of these products. One of the things when we came out of stealth, 
and launch the pro product in January at CES. This wall is actually a um, collection of all of the inbound calls that we've got from people who are desperate wanting to solve their thermal issues. For example, there's a company, I'm using Panasonic because yeah. they don't have the same problem like Sony. I'm just, yes. I'm joking, right? But <laughs> they have this problem where they set cameras that sometimes overheat. And they and shut down. it's kind of down. sad. Mm -hmm. Like when you buy a camera, it should just work. Yes, exactly. Uh, this could help. Yes. So you could be doing 8K video recording and your camera can stay thin, light and, and be fine. And silent. Silent? Which of course when you're using a video recording it has to be quiet. You don't want a noisy fan there so that's been a li limitation. Now but, you can do it. But one of the things he said in his video, uh, he said right now it sounds a little bit uh, so, noisy, yes, but so that's he, because it's not optimized the whole thing yet. Yes, so he, he, he was looking at our, at our laptop sat sample in, inside and that's where we actually retrofitted a Samsung Galaxy Book Pro with, with, with air jets. So where the air comes out the, comes out the back through, through this spout, it actually hits the, um, hits the hinge on the, on, on the laptop. It's not designed for this. If we had designed the laptop around AirJet, we would have ensured that it had a clear path for air. So what you can actually hear is the air coming out and hitting the edge of the ca casing because it wasn't an, a laptop that was designed for AirJet. I can imagine the people, this guy for example, <laughs> uh, I can imagine his life is very noisy. Yes. It's like, it's like entering an a aircraft noisy when you go to the cloud cloud server area. Yeah. Are you going to help with that? Um, potentially, yes. So we can do spot cooling on the, on the me me memory, on the M2, me um, M2 st storage, so we can do read, read writes f faster. And that's really one, one of the things that is really important in the, in the data centers too, is the speed of tra transfer. And again, that's dictated by the heat in the th thermal envelope. It's like, it sounds like it's the biggest challenge they always have when they build the cloud servers, the server rooms. It's always uh, heat, too much power. And, yep. But if you help these guys, it's like huge. And yep. they, I mean, they, they also pay 50,000 for a board and stuff. They have bigger budgets. Yes. So there's been lots of discussions about this here, right? Yep. So there, we, we, can, we can really, any one of these, we can, we can help. So whether it's, um, it's storage, it's writing, it's LED lighting, gaming, phoning, Wi-Fi access, automotive is going to be a little bit further down the path because this, the certification requirements for avionics and automotive is going to take us a little, a little bit, bit longer. But I have to tell you when there are 3,000 chips in the average car, that's a lot of heat and they're really interested in, in, in our solution. That we've got. It sounds like it's one of the challenges with electric cars also with all the batteries. They have some huge challenges yep, that they kind of try to figure out. Yep, and self-driving cars, when you think about the LiDAR that's required to help navigate them, they have the same kind of heat problem. So it's really, it's a ubiquitous problem with the IoT devices that are getting more and more common, need more and more power in smaller and smaller form factors. It really is, there is a, um, it's a huge opportunity and we can add a lot of that value across a lot of different industries. My next uh, uh, HDMI stick uh, is just going to be full PC power uh, and it's just going to be cooled with, with this. And then you talk about TVs because Maybe there's a light field, 8K display, 16K, all this. It's yes. used a lot of power yep. and you're going to maybe help them. Heat. And that's not only on the electronics. I mean, the whole thing is electronics, but also display parts, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, there are, there are many, many applications for this. And we are actively working with customers as fast as we can because there's been a lot of demand, as you can imagine, because everybody wants more power and more capability in smaller and smaller pa pa packages. And if you want that, a side product is heat. And you can help when I, when it goes to the dentist, it's gonna yes. hurt less or what? <laughs> what's, the, what's gonna help there with the dentist? Um, basically, it's not go, going, go, going to get hot. So again, as you're using that, it gets very hot on, on the handle because it's using power. So again, if you can put a cooling d device in it, it removes all of that heat. All right, so here you've, been, you've had such a busy Computex yes. and you, people come in here and for example, you show 
you show comparison, right? Yes. So basically, one of the um, cool things about the air jet is, is it has a really high back pressure or suction force. And this really shows that to get the same suction force out of a fan, the fan would be this kind of size. And trust me, you don't want to be carrying one of these around in your laptop or your gaming, ha handheld ga gaming device. <laughs> so actually on social media, you don't care if people say if a Ferrari sucks. No, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it sucks. Yeah. A lot of air that that is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. That's pretty good. And so what, what goes on with the, the, oh, here's also helping with the, Camera. that's on your website? Yep. All this? Yes. It's all on, on our web website. And Sing. it's like listing all the different applications Yep. Uh, to do more and more terabyte SSDs and everything. Exactly. And what goes next in the demo? Yeah. So this is really cool, actually. This is called a Schlerian image, and it actually visualizes the, um, vi visualizes the heat. So this is actually happening live here. It's a little bit on the geeky side, but you can, you, it's a vi visualization of the airflow coming out of these two air jets. So if we were to go down there, we could, let me run over and stick my hand in it for you. If you keep looking over there, you can see in real time, I can put my hand there, and if you were to come and feel here, it actually, you can, you, you can feel the w warm air coming, coming out of here. So th th this is actually one that's happening in real time. So people can see what the actual airflow is of it. Can All you right. feel, feel that heat coming out? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So it's good. But it's cool, right? All right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so how long has it been in, in development? Um, so Frawl was, um, Frawl was spent, whoops, oh. spent four years in stealth doing this. They actually came out of stealth mode in December la last year. Um, and then at CES in January, we, we actually launched the, the prop product. So we've really been in market maybe four months. And the response from industry across so many different se segments has been phenomenal. And where are you based? So our head office and R&D center is actually in San Jose in, Cal in California. And our fab, our manufacturing plant, is actually here in Taiwan. And what do I see here with the, it's showing how the, the mini PC can be um, designed? Yep. So this is actually the product that was, that was launched here this, this week. So this is the first mini PC in the world that has AirJet Mini in it. So you can see it's got, it's got two, two chips in there and they're actually placed onto a copper sp spreader like this, then put into the device. The air is then in, comes in through these um, side vents which have dust proof co covering over them. The air circulates around the device, is then sucked into the AirJet Mini. It transfers the heat. So air that is completely saturated with heat exits out of those two super skinny exit vents that you probably have trouble seeing because they're so small. Yeah. That's a very compact area of air coming out. Yes. And this is demonstrating? Yeah, so this is one of the demos. On this side we have the, we have the mini PC which has actually got the air jets turned off. On that side, we have the air jets turned on. So you can see here the performance is the CPU power is 1.2 and the system power is 9, which is really low. Nobody would use it like that. And you can see the impact it has on this heavy, heavy workload that we've got here. If you can see over at this one here, you can see when we turn the air jets on, it jumps from 1.2 up to 6.2. It normally runs about 7. And the system power is up to 20. And if you can see the video there, it's actually running smoothly, not jerky like this one. So there it's active and the, yes. the hot air is coming out. Yep. And they're still kind of fine tuning. This is, this is going to be available in probably about three, three, three months time. Um, and they're going to, they're going to, they're tweaking the rest of the system because the efficiency in the rest of the system isn't, you know, as good as it could be. So we anticipate by the time this is actually out in market, this should be closer to nine, nine and a half, ten watts. 
but, uh, I mean, when I look at this, it looks like 10 times faster, but you're talking double. Yes. Because from 1 to 10, it's 10, but I mean, it could be kind of like double. Yes. Yeah. So ba ba basically, when this hit hits the market, it'll be it'll be twice as um, it'll have twice the processing power of the previous generation that didn't have air jets in it. And it's just an Intel i3 and 300, and you just crank it up. Yep. So I guess these chip makers must be very excited by your presentations here, right? I think so. Yes. And the the question is. How soon? How much? You know, all this. This yep. is a big question, no? So, how, how soon is these are actually being mass pr pr produced now? So, the Airjet Mini is actually av available now. Um, as you can see, it's been in integrated into the mini, the world's first mini PC here, a, Zo a Zotac product. It's actually the Zotac. You can see here how it fits together. It's the Zotac. It's the Z-Box PI430AJ, standing for Airjet, with Airjet, um, and that will be on the market probably late August at this point. But there will be a certain cost difference between that version and that version, yes. uh, which hopefully it's not double the price of the whole box. No, I mean, it's, it's really, it's up to our cu customers how much they, how much they, they price it. It, it de definitely does cost more than, than a fan, um, but it is obviously an acceptable price in increase because our customer is going with it. Um, but the benefit is it costs a little more, but it doubles the performance. So really, Air Airjet is, is ideal for people who either value much higher performance or they need the product to be silent or much smaller or dust free. And if you have multiple of those, then most people are really, really excited. So this. somebody saying in the chat, just don't call it the hottest new thing. No. Oh. So it's the coolest new <laughs> I thing, like right? That. It's definitely the coolest yeah. new thing. Yeah. And uh, here we see, this is. Are you doing a security like? Yeah. So this is a, this is a, a, actually a ring, a ring ca camera. So we obviously we bought this off the shelf. We've in integrated one Airjet Mini into it. So now your ring camera can be 8K. 120 frames per second. Yes. Right. Before it's just a little 4K thing. As soon as they improve the performance of the chip, so they can do more, they now you, you can see with the commercial, it, it's running at 45.9 degrees. With the Airjet, it's 31.8 degrees. That difference in the difference in temperature actually equates to extra headroom that you can put more processing power in to get the Airjet version up, and you'd see a dramatic increase in, in performance. Nice. Uh, can you describe a little bit? Um, How about the the, oh, yeah. the lighting one is pretty, pretty cool, actually. Yeah. So this is how much you can reduce the lighting. Product. Yeah, so th th this is an ap application that we had no idea about until they ca came to us. But here you have, if you look into the high quality L L LEDs, so L uh, so, so LED da down lights that are in hotels or you know shopping centers are really expensive high, high quality ones. If you were to see up above the little down light, this massive box is actually in, in the ceiling. And the reason it has to be so large is they um, is it has to be totally sealed, so it has to be totally um, airtight and it has to be large enough to dissipate the heat coming off this LED mo module. So to, to do that, they need this, which is the biggest heat sink I think I've ever seen. It's massive and it's really heavy. So they have to do that to put it in here to keep it cool. What we did was we, you know, they reached out to us and we were like, hmm, I think we can help you. Um, and we actually took this and we took a module that looks like this and we popped it on the other side of the LED module and we basically replaced this really, really heavy, my arms getting hold, just hold, sore just holding it with this little um, two air jet mini thermal mo module. And what that enabled us to do was go from a product size that was this to this. So you ch you're changing the lighting industry. Com com completely. And, and it's, you know, it's a 90% it's a decrease in volume. It's a 72 de percent decrease in weight, and the temperature is a little bit warmer, but well below the th threshold. 
So the value that this cu customer is getting out of this is not only the performance and the increased demand for a smaller, easier to use product, it's also the, the savings on cost and storage and shipping costs because of this big, big weight. I mean, it really brings all of this value. Uh, one of the biggest costs in all consumer electronics is power consumption. Mm -hmm. So you could potentially also use half the power at the same performance. Um, because you do double yeah. the performance at the same power. Or, uh, how's yeah. the power comparison? Um, power consumption isn't necessarily one of the um, one of the selling points that, that, that we have. But you're but you're absolutely right in that you can you can do twi twice as much. So that's going to be yeah. exciting too to see what happens. Here's a laptop. Yep. So th this is a um, these are two Galaxy Book Pro two Galaxy Book to Pro 13s. This one is straight off the shelf and you can see it's running with a system power of 20 watts and a CPU power of 12 watts. This one over here we've actually retrofitted with three Airjet minis that you can see under here. One, two, three. So the way this is performing at the moment you can see up here is at 25 watts and 16 watts. So you, you, you can already see just with the three Airjet Minis in here, we've already had a significant in increase in performance. If we designed this laptop, we actually would have put a fourth one in place and that would have taken this from 16 up to 20 watts in the same super slim design. The other thing that's really cool about this, again, is because of that high back pressure. In a laptop like this, I don't know whether you can see it, but it's got, if I lift this up, it's got an air vent across the back here. If you can see all those, yeah. those air vents. That's there because the fan is, the fan was here, which you can see corresponded to, to, to those air vents. The reason those air vents have to be there is because the back pressure or the suction power of a fan is really low. So when we put the air jets in, we can, we can remove any air vents on, on the device except for one air vent, one intake vent along the back, which we cover with, with, with dustproof material, and that makes the entire laptop dust, dustproof, which is amazing. If you've ever looked inside a, a laptop with, with a fan and seen all the dust bunnies in there, very unattractive. Uh, somebody's asking, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, somebody's asking, are they using cavitation to increase throughput of air? But I guess it's a whole question of like where the air comes from and stuff, uh, and you just grab the air. You don't yeah. need to have huge holes everywhere to grab the air. Oh, no, no. The, so, so the air, air comes in just through a super slim slot on the, on, on the side. So, so, so we just have one slim in, inlet on, in, in the back. We cover it with, with dustproof material, which doesn't impact it at all because of the, the back pressure or the suction force. Um, and then that air actually is designed to come in, circulate around the actual laptop to cool it before it's sucked into to the air jets. And, to, and then it, it then takes the, um, it then transfers the heat directly from, in this case, a va vapor chamber into the air jets where the heat is then transferred into the air and eject, ejected out of the, the device. So here, uh, it's not an optimal design, right? No. But you're already doing 33% more performance, yes. but you also use more power on this one. Yes. Uh, but, um, yep. but what you're claiming is 50% potential. Yes. Yeah. So that's going to be exciting. Yeah. For, and, and that's, that's useful same. both for Intel and ARM CPUs, like for any any CPU, they all do it heat. Works, it, anything that ge generates heat, this will remove heat from. Um, but the re the real sweet spot for us are compact devices that need increased performance or de decreased size, and dustproof and silent. So if we get all of those things, then this is really the perfect fit for it. And that's why we've had so many inquiries from places where we never even thought about it. Another really good one is actually the, the SSD. So if you've seen the newest high performance SSDs coming out with the Th Th Thunderbolt 4 on it, you'll notice a lot of them have a massive big heat sink on it. 
So here we've taken a SSD accessory, we've retrofitted it with two um, AirJet Minis. And you can see here, if you, could, if you could feel this, this one is the standard off the shelf one, really hot. Oh, this, is full. this one is the AirJet one and it's, you know, significantly cooler. Oh my God, this, you can cook an egg. Yeah, yeah. it's hot. <laughs> yeah. And you can, so for the people, out there who can't touch it the temperature up here of the commercial one is 69 degrees and on the SS on the air jet one is 56 degrees now in an ideal world we, we would actually show the increase in performance but unfortunately on this device this is a um, Thunderbolt 3 these are performing at the highest they can with a th 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 Thunderbolt 3 if we had a Thunderbolt 4 on it we would be ramping up the um, ramping up the p performance here and the temperature would be the same you and you would three, see 4, the difference. Well, we, you know, this is, this is what the pr pr projection is that we will actually, when we have the th Thunderbolt 4, we'll, we'll be able to get up to that maximum 4 GB, GBs per second read and write. Yeah, that's what I've been it's waiting for. It's massive change. Because Apple and other have been releasing laptops supposedly can do 40 gigabit per second, but the SSD makers can't are not up. yet releasing them because they can't. Yep, and when they do, unless they use AirJet, they're going to have one of those massive heat sinks on it, which are really not very customer friend friendly, I have to say. All right. So the mass production is going to happen in some very interesting fabs and you're designing those fabs? Yep, so we have our, our fabrication um, manufacturing plant is actually here because this is completely new. It's new materials, new design, new, um, new machines to make it, new machines to test it. Everything about it is, is, is new, so we've, so we've had to build, build our own fab here. Um, so that's here in tai tai Taiwan, um, and they're going into mass pro production now, actually, um, because we've been out of stealth now in four, four months. We've got our customers li lined up, so these are starting to roll off and go into devices, which customers will be able to buy here in the coming months. And here at Computex, you did let some people try to open it up a little bit and yes. look what's inside, right? Yes. You don't have one that's already open right here? No. no? We actually, right. yeah, no. We, um, we It'd be nice to see with a microscope what's happening in there. Yeah. So number one, we wouldn't, you know, we didn't let them look, look at it with a with a microscope either. But basically, basically, if you look inside it, there is a cap cavity in there, and a um, there are vibrating piezoelectric membranes, and they actually cause a suction force, and then air comes down and impinges in pulsating jets that move at 200 kilometers an hour in here, which blows me, me away, literally. That they impinge on the copper base here. And that vertical impingement at 200 kilometers an hour breaks the thermal barrier. And that enables the air inside this air jet chip to become completely saturated with heat and then ejected from the device out of this little spout. All right, that's, that's really cool. Um, uh, so I guess there's potential for so many other markets yeah. And here it's hot, it's hot in Taiwan. Yes. Are you going to be uh, air conditioned? Um, air conditioners are a bit big for us yet, but you know, really the, this, can be, this could be scaled up or down. Um, but we're only a very young com company. We obviously have a very, very um, new and innovative tech that can be expanded to all kinds of markets. It's just what makes sense on our, road, our roadmap. Hello, I'm Mr. Beast. No, I'm not Mr. Beast, actually. But if I was Mr. Beast and if I was sending you a bunch of money, I would use Wise. Wise is a really smart way to send money around the world. Tiny little fees. Check out my video, a seven minute video where I try to explain some more. It works in hundreds of countries. Every time you go to a different country, use your Wise card or use your Android Pay, your, your uh, Apple Pay to do all your payments with a tiny little conversion pay. Uh, fee. If you have some customers in different countries, they can send you money to local bank accounts in the US and Europe, all over the world. You can get local bank account details. They transfer tiny little fees. Don't use PayPal anymore. Don't use Western Union. And don't use your bank to send money because it's surprising, but you wouldn't know maybe, but they take fees that are gigantic, that are pretty big. Just use the wise. It's smart.